Hello everyone, this is Inayat Meer with my Windows Server 2016 failover clustering environment and a live demo. I will go and show you configuring a failover cluster for Hyper-V and also I will show you configure a highly available virtual machine. We will go in this video with three different parts. This will be very high level. You might have seen my previous fail over clustering videos. Let's go over the scenario. The initial deployment of virtual machines on Hyper-V has been successful for a Datum corporation. So I am going to use this fictitious corporation from Microsoft as a next step in VM deployment. A datum is considering ways to ensure that the services and applications deployed on the VMs are highly available as a part of the implementation of high availability for most network services and applications. A datum is also considering options for making the VMs that run on Hyper-V highly available so what we're gonna do here we are going to show you how to enable your hyper v virtual machine add virtual machines on virtual machines so this was not possible before but this will happen now i am going to use uh, multiple virtual machines but first you consider that i am on a physical machine right now so this machine what you're looking at will act as a host to uh, which will be technically a virtual machine but in this lab environment i am acting one physical then i am running virtual machines on top of a physical machine so let's log into first my first server which will act as a host server so this will be part of a datum domain so once you log in you will see that where you logged in so lon dash host 2 will be acting as a physical server you will see a hyper v installed on this server and also you will see Hyper-V machines running on this host too, but we have to configure those machines first uh, to handle the virtual machines on virtual. So to do that, we are going to perform few commands first, but let me configure this uh, font. At least it should be a visible font so you can see properly but before that uh, i want to show you these four uh, different three commands we are going to actually run first so these commands gonna be like of the environment changing in first command you are going to add two processors in second command you will basically make sure that dynamic memory expandition uh, or exp expanding dynamic memory is not uh, checked and also you will go and you will make sure that mac address spoofing is on so let me show you through the gui way first how this works so i have to go to my virtual machines first in my physical environment so where you can figure out how this works this is my virtual environment where i have multiple virtual machines under my settings of one of my virtual machine first you look at the memory so here enable dynamic memory is the option where you can check or uncheck the processors here you can increase the processor or decrease through this up arrow and down arrow it depends that how many core or logical uh, processors you are running right now and under your network adapter you can expand it under advanced feature you can look at your uh, other options 
one of them will be enable mac address spoofing so this has to be checked so these uh, were few things which we have to go through and configure through the command line so that is where we are right now so i am going to continue from here so the best way is that you simply can have these commands available you can copy and paste on the command line so uh, because we are going to configure two virtual machines nv2 and nv3 so the names of the we call them nv host 3 and nv host 2 so you will see those virtual machines are already available on my this physical lon host 2 so each machine will take these three commands so i showed you from my settings uh, what i am going to change actually so you just gonna run one by one to change these settings now i am on four changing settings for LON dash NV host 4. First, you have to increase one processor. Second, you want to make sure that dynamic memory enabled is not checked. Third, you have to make sure that MAC spoofing, MAC address spoofing is on. So each topic I showed you, each command I showed you through GUIWAY also has a detailed definition under the settings when you go and view this through the GUI method, using the GUI method. So this was the first thing which we prepared. Now we are ready to start our machines as well. So this is my server manager you can pin server manager to the taskbar where you can see now your all virtual machines but none of these virtual machines is actually on so you have to turn on lon dash nv host 3 and lon dash nv host 4 so let's go and turn on these two machines the reason is that you have to go back to your powershell from your physical machine and connect remotely to these two machines nv host 3 and nv host 4 one by one by using provided credentials so that is uh, the reason we are going to turn these virtual machines on we are going to use a ps session command to get into these servers remotely from powershell so that is our next part because we are going to use our adatum administrator credentials to get into these uh, servers so let's go and take a look how we're gonna do, do that so because we are going to use a command line or the powershell through the ps session to install hyper v features on virtuals again on virtuals so nv host 3 and nv host 4 are virtual machines now i am back on the same window where i was before so that indicates I am on my uh, physical server where I have my virtuals running on it. So I have already Hyper-V installed on physical. I am going to use enter-ps session to get into the first virtual machines which is 2740b-lon-nvhost3. So once you hit enter, you have to provide a username and password for the host you are adding right now. Once you enter host username and password here, you will see at the back of the row. So you are inside of 2740B and V host 3. If you want to make sure you just can type a host name, you can see the host name where you are. But I'm going to add here a Windows feature 
which is a hyper v so this is the command you can use and after hyper v installation my server will automatically restart so that is the first thing you are doing right now on LON dash NV host 3. So you are installing Hyper V feature, Hyper V role on a virtual server. Now you can exit, but you have to connect back to the second. This is a pair of two servers. So let's connect back using previously used commands change the host name from nv host 3 to nv host 4 provide the credentials now you will see at the starting of the row you are in lon dash nv host 4 not in 3 use the up arrow command go back to the roles you installed before Hyper-V, so you are adding Hyper-V on this server as well. So on the back end you see that my NV host 3 is rebooting. Same thing can happen with NV host 4. This host will reboot once Hyper-V is installed. So these both servers will be ready now with the Hyper-V role installed so that was the very crucial task first you can make changes through the powershell very simple and easy once you're done you can actually run the next part of the lab which is a configuring a fail our cluster for hyper v we are going to have a live migration as well and we will have a failover with a live migration that will happen in my <coughs> next two videos so this was the first part very simple you just saw that when we have used a physical server on top of it we had a couple of virtual servers now uh, we actually uh, installed hyper v role on the back end we have a domain controller like a dc dc has to be on in order to log into the dc as well but this was the initially first thing which i have done so i have three virtual machines running on the back end so we performed two very important tasks we will continue with a fail our cluster for hyper v part so this will be the next part where we are going to perform these all tasks one by one and i will actually go over through the scenario as well but i think it's time to take a short break and come back with my part two where we're gonna continue with configuring a failover cluster for hyper v where i am going to connect through my iSCSI sen from my servers i will install fail our clustering feature on both virtual machines and we will continue for fail our a virtual machine and a uh, live migration part of a virtual machine so thank you for watching see you in my second video bye